to various more. He went down with Jeff Wilson Jr. in the offseason, never came back. Now T- Jaquaski Tart, maybe not come back, maybe won't come back. And the option is Talano Hufunga, who looks kind of like a, more of a special teamer than a starting safety. And Tavares Moore, who has started games as safety for the 49ers. What do you think the night? What do you think it's like a fair expectation for Moore is this year? I mean, I personally think it's a little bit too risky to slot him in as a starter. That seems to me as a a value move that you attempt to get away with and hope that it doesn't bite you in the uh, in the rear end because he's coming off of an Achilles injury, right? And and for every good Achilles injury story that you hear, most recently you would look at Cam Akers coming back from that injury. There are two or three Achilles injuries that don't heal properly. The person very clearly loses a step and isn't able to recover. To me, that would be fairly risky. My hope is that this is a a, a fairly soft safety market with some reasonable choices out there. Marcus Williams, Jesse Bates, Tyron Matthew, uh, Justin Reed, Jordan Whitehead, Quandre Diggs, and Jaquaski Tart. If there are seven reasonably quality veteran free agents available in a historically soft safety market, you could see a scenario where the 49ers are able to get some value later on. You may enter free agency with Tavarius Moore penciled in, but I think the hope has got to be that you replace it with a veteran. I <laughs> I think a lot of Niner, a lot of fans would hope the Niners would go from Tart to like an upgrade. Like they're going to move from Tart, who was a second-round pick, to someone really gifted, like Jabril Peppers, former first-round pick, or Justin Reed. He was a third-round pick, but he's a really good player. And I'm afraid the Nines going to be like, well, we have Hafunga and more. Like, we, we're we good. That's two. Between the two of them, we'll roll those two guys out, let them compete, maybe bring in one more late-round pick. I mean, that's – that's more was a third-round pick? I, I'm a little afraid that's how they're going to go because they they definitely like value shopping in the secondary. Yes. And I would equate it to their strategy with uh, Jason Verrett last year in in a high risk, potentially high reward scenario, but underline the high risk portion of that, that you could walk in with with Tavarius Moore and, and Hufanga penciled in as competing for that spot. But there is significant risk in taking that strategy. You you are uh, shorting the salary and saving some money, but there's a, a definite cost that comes with it, and, and it could be something that bites the 49ers in the uh, in the rear. The difference is Jason Verrett actually managed to have a Pro Bowl season before coming to the 49ers. Yes. So you could say, well, if he gets healthy, we have an idea of what he can do. I still don't know exactly what it is that Tavarius Moore does here. I think he was a project who needed development and playing time. Didn't yeah. get it. So Highly athletic. I'm a little con- – I'm a, and that's that's this thing. You're a DB, and you were in the NFL solely because of how athletic you were. It's not because you're a good tackler. It's not because you have good instincts. You are 6'3", and you ran a 4'3". End of story. You're a safety in the NFL, and now you tore your Achilles. So where are you at? Where's what's your 40 time? How valuable are you to the 49? Because if you have lost a little something in your athleticism, you may be worth nothing to this team. Right. Team. Yeah. If your core value was athleticism, we need to know what kind of athleticism you have right now. I guess they'll find out. But I, I, I mean, everyone else came back this year, but him. I'm a, I'm a little worried. I'm a, I'm a little, my dad always makes fun of me when I do that. I'm from Oakland. I talk that way. I'm a little, or, I'm a go down. I always do that. Anyway. I'm a little worried that it's it's a position not for of the concern Niners, but for the kid, the young man. It may not it may not work out for him, but uh, I think they'll give him a chance. They should probably hedge their bets there, though. And that's not I don't, I'm not talking hot Talanoa. We talked about that. Trey has to be ready. It doesn't matter if he is. Oh no, wait, no, he didn't. Trey has to be ready. It doesn't matter if he is with no cap room and no draft capital. What are the other options? Yeah, I think that's what some people aren't quite getting is that this is almost a financial move. I don't think the Niners can really go farther with Jimmy unless they extend his contract, which they're not going to do. seems highly unlikely because yeah, because of the Bosa Debo um, factor. Yeah. Anyway, that's the show. Thanks for watching everyone. I really appreciate it. I had a great time. Uh, Make sure you subscribe to Rob's channel. If you don't already, there's a link in the description of this video.
I will be on at 3 p.m. today with Jack Hammer on my channel. Get over there, subscribe to Rob Shoe, and tune in for the Jack Hammer program this afternoon, 3 p.m. Wow. Is that what it's called? No, it doesn't have an official. We were oh. trying to work it in, and someone someone suggested it, it should be like a law firm of, of Hammer and Shoe, and, and we hit them so hard that... Uh, we hit them so hard with the hammer that at the end they're left without even their shoes. Something like that. It was it was lengthy, but it was witty. Yeah, <laughs> my my new show with Eric Crocker. We I called it Crocker and Cone, which to me sounds like a bourbon uh, bar in San Francisco. It's you know what I mean, like a place where the cocktails are like twenty bucks. Bourbon and Branch. It's like oh, that's expensive. I already know. Yeah, it's a speakeasy where you have to know the secret knock it's to get a speakeasy, in. Speakeasy, but it's like everything's thirty five dollars. Yeah. It's great. Anyway, I went to a speakeasy real quick before we left. I went to a speakeasy. I don't know if I told anyone, but Nashville. They have speakeasies everywhere. And I didn't get COVID in Nashville, I'm pretty sure. You would go to this one Nashville. It was in East Nashville across the thing and uh, the river. And they'd be like, all right, so we don't have a we don't have a menu per se. Just give us a, like a, a a taste that you, that you like. A Something flavor profile? Like, give us a flavor profile. Like, give us a flavor profile. And then we'll we'll go from there. That was fun. That was cool. I have to highly recommend. I forget what it was called, but it was a uh, speakeasy in East Nashville. It was dope. And I think there's one, I think there's two of them, one there and one in New York. I, you like that where you have a very crafted experience where you put your uh, culinary or, or taste buds in the hands of the expert and allow them to do their thing. A curated experience, if you will. And when they come through and you're like, oh, this is better than I, anything I could have even. Okay. All right. I trust you. I'm I would have back. never known to ask anything. for this. Anyway, I don't know how we got here. Speakeasies, they're fun. Bourbon Branch. What would it be? Hammer and Shoe. Crocker and Code. Yeah, that's how you know it's nice.